sitting here standing up here. Okay, as coach is here, he will open with a comment, um, and then we'll start taking questions. Well, it's obviously great to be on the field. I think the players are really excited about having the opportunity uh, to go out and practice, you know, together as a team, which has kind of been a long time coming. Um, you know, I think our players did a great job of managing all the uncertainties uh, that we've had, you know, the entire summer. Um, they've worked hard. Uh, the strength and conditioning coaches have done a great job with them. Uh, we made significant progress physically, you know, with a lot of our players, uh, which we're very pleased with. Um, you know, the, the days that we were allowed to have, you know, one hour on the field with them and one hour in meetings went extremely well. It was pretty much like a mini camp, except we just couldn't do full speed, you know, kind of team type stuff. But the players did some of that on their own, like seven on seven, uh, and it went very, very well. Um, <coughs> look, we continue to try to give our, our players an opportunity to play. Uh, they want to play, uh, to be able to compete, to be able to create value for themselves. Uh, and we're working very, very hard to uh, give them an opportunity to do that in a safe way. Um, you know, every player on our team has been told, you don't have to do anything that you're not comfortable with. All right, so anything that we're asking you to do that you're not comfortable with, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to do it. And you know, with that being said, uh, we have a lot of privacy, you know, uh, laws relative to college athletics and college athletes. Uh, and we're going to respect those things when it comes to, you know, health issues with our players. Uh, those things will be kept internal to the team, uh, and we'll keep those things, you know, in house. Um, you know, we're acting in the direction of. You know, the SEC Medical Task Force, the CDC, a lot of other folks to uh, try to comply 100% uh, with everything that we can do to create a safe environment for our players. Uh, and I think it's twofold. You know, the bubble we have here, we've been very successful with. Uh, we've had less than a 2%, you know, positive rate since I think the last month or so, uh, less than 1% the last couple weeks. Uh, so. The personal bubble that guys have to form outside of here, I think, will be a real key to uh, us being able to keep the players safe and keep them healthy. And uh, that's relative to they, what they do you know, as a student. All right, so we're trying to give them direction on that. Uh, we have the Surgeon General speaking to the team tonight, uh, which we're trying to inform our players and give them the best possible education uh, in every possible health and medical issue uh, that COVID-19 can possibly present to them. Um, and we're constantly weighing the consequences of playing, uh, but we're also weighing the consequences of not playing uh, and how that would impact the players uh, and what they would do and the isolation that it would create uh, for them and how we can manage it for them. Uh, so our goals for fall camp you know, are not much different, even though this is not really going to be camp. It's going to be more like you know, in-season practice uh, is to, you know, form hardcore fundamentals of discipline, work ethic, uh, mental and physical toughness to be able to sustain. Uh, obviously, conditioning is a really important part of that, uh, which we always have to improve on. Uh, we want the players to improve their fundamentals in terms of technique, but also in their knowledge of offense, defense, and special team systems so that they have a chance to go out there and uh, compete uh, and play well and create value for themselves when, when and if they get the opportunity to do that. And we want to come together as a team uh, and you know, have a lot of pride in being an Alabama football player and being responsible for you know, what goes with um, the, the accountability and responsibility that goes with what a player has to do to represent this university and our team. So. Um, with that, I'll take questions. Okay. Chris Walsh, we're going to come to you. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Coach, has, uh, have any players opted out? And can you give us an update on uh, is anyone injured at the start of camp? Right. We, 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 we only have Brandon Cajo has a slight knee injury, probably out for a few days. Um, 
you know, like I said, we're, we are not going to uh, – we're going to keep all those issues internal to our team. Uh, the players have asked me to do that, uh, and I agree with them. You know, that's what I meant by the privacy laws of – uh, what we have to do to protect guys, you know, in college football. So, um, you know, if and when a player is ready to make an announcement about that, we'll, we'll give it to you, and that'll be his prerogative to do that. Next is Heather Dinich. Please unmute yourself, Heather, and go ahead. ESPN. Nate, can you hear me? Sure. If you are able to have a college football season this year, how do you think – the college football playoff should change, if at all, to determine a national championship in a year that's so unpredictable and, and strange? Well, you know, obviously that's a hypothetical question, but in my opinion, um, there's going to be three conferences playing. Uh, I think the players look forward to the playoffs. Uh, I think the players that play should have an opportunity to have a playoff and have a championship uh, for, the, for the teams that are playing. Um, that's my opinion. I'm sure there's a lot of people that may or may not agree with that. But if we're fortunate enough to be able to manage this with player safety being the number one concern for all of us um, and that we can go through a season and we can figure out who the best teams are, I think there will be a lot of interest uh, to see those teams play. Uh, and I know the players would certainly look forward you know, to playing. That's one of the biggest questions our players ask us. Coach, if we play, will we be able to play in a playoff? We want to have a chance to play in a championship if we have a good season. So um, that, that's where I sort of formulate my opinion from is what our players think. Yeah, Nick, uh, I know there's a lot of talk because about the, the players and their health, but just wondering about you, what's your approach to – the health protocols as someone who's in maybe in a uh, an age range to maybe more at risk than some of the players. So you calling me an old? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> more so than the players, maybe. <laughs> Look, you know, we have a lot of respect for um, what we need to do uh, with everybody in our organization in terms of what we got to do to stay safe. I mean, we all wear masks in the building. I just took mine off to come in here because it was so hot outside. Um, I wear one that's around your neck and you pull up like you're robbing a bank, whatever they're called. Uh, and, um, you know, everybody in the building does that. Uh, and, you know, we've done everything that we can do here. Uh, we have Syntex in the building, which is supposed to kill germs and all kind of stuff circulating. So uh, we've, we've, we test our players at the beginning on Sunday. Uh, we've done it uh, ever since the 4th of July so that they know that the players that they're working out with are healthy and safe, and then we do it later in the week. So our players are used to being tested twice a week, which is most people are just starting now, but we're, we're, we've been doing that all along because I wanted every player to know the guy he was working out with uh, or doing some drill with or whatever um, was not something that he had to fear, and I think that's helped us tremendously. Um, Look, I, I practice social distancing. Uh, we try to keep our distance when we're away from here, uh, our personal bubble, uh, Miss Terry and I, uh, and just you know our immediate family. Um, when I go see my mother, who's 88 years old, we sit 10 feet apart on a, on a park bench uh, and talk for 45 minutes or an hour. Um, and you know, I say, Mom, I'm not giving you a hug today because I love you. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of changes that we all have to make in our lifestyle and the things that we do um, to try to stay safe. And uh, we certainly have respected those things. Um, we do the same thing when we're in meetings with players. We stay spread out. Everybody has social distance. Everybody wears a mask. Um, so we're doing everything we can to stay safe. And, um, and I, I, don't, I don't fear. Uh, this because we're trying to do the right thing and we have great medical care here and we've got medi great medical protocols to try to keep people safe and I feel very confident uh, in trying to uh, respect and do those things as well as possible. Okay, we're going to go to Aaron Suttles. Aaron, please un uh, unmute yourself. Nick, what's the one area of the defense you want to see improve this year and what role maybe does, does Dylan Moses play in that? 
Well, I think we need to improve overall on defense. I mean, you know, we gave up 18 and a half points a game last year, which is the most we've given up. The last two years, we've given up the most points uh, we have for a long time. And, um, you know, I, I think we need um, better leadership. Um, I think Dylan Moses can provide some of that. Uh, I think we have to play better against the run. Uh, I don't think we played very well in the red area last year. Uh, we did a great job of getting turnovers. We got 28 you know, turnovers last year, which was first in the conference. Um, but, you know, we, we, we just have to get more physical with the line of scrimmage. I think the big challenge for this team because of the four starters we lost in the secondary out of five guys is to get that rebuilt um, with some good players who lack experience. Um, but they are, they are good players and we have confidence in them. So, uh, but that's going to be a key to the drill, especially, you know, the fact that they we didn't have spring practice, and we weren't able to work with these guys as much as we usually are. Uh, but uh, I, I really think you know a lot of these Zoom things that we did in the off season and the meetings that we had really helped players conceptually understand the defense and what they were supposed to do. Maybe not so much how they were supposed to do it, uh, but why it's important to do it that way and what they were supposed to do. I think there was a lot of benefit to a lot of that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Coach, I'm sorry. Uh, this sort of goes to something you've said before, but I'm just thinking about how much you like to go first on first. And if things like that have to be adjusted, or do you think they have to be adjusted? I didn't practice. understand. Say that again, Kirk. We're having trouble hearing you. Uh, I think, Coach, you like to go a lot of first on first, or more than most people, maybe. And uh -huh. I wonder if first on first is a concern. Situation. Why would it be? I mean, I don't know why it would be. I I I, I don't understand well, the reasoning behind the question. I'm sorry. Let me. The question, I guess, is like: Would you put your uh, left tackle against your best pass rusher for an extended period of time, uh, or would you maybe go first on second more? I'm sorry, but. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're trying to know that the guy you're playing against in practice doesn't have it uh, through extensive testing. Um, you know, we have a testing center here, and every player can get tested every day if they want to. Um, so I still think there's value in practicing good on good, uh, challenging people. Um, you know, we, we have got some medical information that when people are outside and they're just briefly in contact with each other. Uh, they do have the shields on um, that they're not at great risk uh, of spreading um, this disease. But at the same time, you know, we're hopeful that uh, we're not putting anybody out there that has it. Uh, and we certainly, one of the reasons that we're only going to play SEC teams is we can control the protocol of making sure whoever we're playing against and whoever they're playing against uh, does not have it as well. So. Um, I have thought about, you know, when we were doing workout groups and so forth in the summer, you know, not putting all the receivers in the same group, don't put all the offensive linemen in the same group. So if one guy got it, you know, that whole, you know, position would get wiped out. Um, I, we did think about some of those things, uh, but really haven't thought about the good on good part of it. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much. Um, Nick, uh, the full schedule was released uh, tonight from the SEC. What, um, what is your take on the SEC only schedule? What challenges and opportunities does this present for your organization? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, people made a decision based on, you know, player safety, you know, what was best for the league, what we could control player safety with. And, you know, there was a lot of expert people that I have a lot of respect for medically as well as professionally who, you know, made this decision. Uh, it's not an easy decision, uh, but uh, it's something that we're, you know, all committed to trying to create a safe environment for the players to be able to play and compete. I think the fact that we're playing 10 SEC games, I mean, I've been a guy that's been wanting to play 10 SEC games for a long time. Um, 
So this year we get to do that. Uh, I think it's good for our players who get the opportunity to create value against 10 really quality opponents, uh, you know, in our league. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be very challenging uh, because, you know, it's going to be every week you're going to have a very, very good opponent. But I think it's, you know, good for the fans. Um, hopefully it'll create a lot of interest. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it. And, you know, I, I looked at this, you know, schedule and, you know, I, I think they did it as fairly as possible. And, you know, we go to Missouri to start, play Texas A&M early. Uh, we got to play everybody at some point in time, so we just got to take them one game at a time. So, uh, and that's exactly how we've always approached it, and we will approach it right now. Two more quick ones. We'll start with uh, Mike Rodak. Mike? Nick, just uh, there's a lot made yesterday um, with some of the students returning to campus, and a lot of them weren't wearing masks and, and gathering in, in large crowds. Uh, obviously, Greg Byrne came out and was pretty vocal against that. Just what was your, um, your view of that, seeing that yesterday? Well, you know, I think democracy is great, and I think people that have all these freedoms, I think that's all great. But I think there's one thing that is probably a common denominator that uh, really makes all that work, and that's that people have great moral integrity in the choices and decisions that they make. And you know, I'm not criticizing anybody here, but uh, a lot of people have asked that we wear masks when we're in public, uh, when we're in crowds, when we're in large groups of people, that we keep social distanced. And I, I don't think they're doing that just for the heck of it. Uh, I think there's a reason for it. Uh, we're trying to control the spread of this disease. Uh, and I think that our ability to do that is going to go a long way in saying whether we can play football or not. Uh, but bigger than that, uh, it's just your own personal bubble for your own personal safety. You know, every one of these students uh, to take the proper care of themselves and respect the protocols that people are recommending for your safety. Uh, and I just think that's the smart thing to do. Last question, uh, Charlie Potter. Charlie? Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned Dylan Moses earlier. And are he and the rest of the guys that either missed all the season or a lot of the season last year, are they good to go in camp from a health standpoint? Yeah, they're all good to go. They've been going all, all summer, uh, all spring. Um, yeah, they've been going, not a problem. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate you all. Thank you.